Today I'm going to show you how to make pesto the old world way using a mortar and pestle. I'm Corinne Phillips and this is Fresh Pea Cooks. Today I want to show you how to make pesto. For this recipe you're going to need basil, garlic, olive oil, salt, and pine nuts. Now, pine nuts are one of those ingredients that are so exceedingly expensive. They're beautiful in this, you don't need very many, but if you just can't get a hold of them, you can also make delicious pesto using sunflower seeds. Now, pesto, in essence, is a flavored oil, and a lot of people don't realize that. The beauty of it is the oil. But today we're going to make the classic Italian style pesto using a mortar and pestle. One of the benefits of using a mortar and pestle is you crush the leaves rather than cut them. And so you extract all of that really beautiful basil essence. Now when you're using a mortar and pestle, you want to start with garlic. And to get all of that garlic smashed up really evenly, you use salt. And salt just acts as kind of like sandpaper and it breaks open all of those um, little cells and releases all that delicious garlic flavor. There isn't really a recipe for pesto. There, there is and there isn't. You need to adjust it by tasting, and it just depends on how big your garlic cloves are, how strong your basil is. Um, so I'm gonna give you kind of approximation, but I definitely want you, when you make it, to taste it. And if something is out of balance, if it's too garlicky, you can add more oil. You can add more cheese if you're adding it. You can add more pine nuts. Traditionally, pesto has Parmesan cheese. I almost always add the cheese after the fact because if you're making pesto and freezing it and then you're adding it into a dish later on, Parmesan cheese is notorious for kind of getting sticky and clumpy once it's reheated. It doesn't reheat beautifully. So if you leave the cheese out and you freeze your pesto without cheese, when you toss it in with those noodles, it's not gonna just melt and stick to the bottom of your pan. You're going to season your noodles and then right before you serve it, you can toss in some fresh Parmesan cheese. Okay, we have four cloves of garlic. I'm going to add maybe a half a teaspoon of salt and just crush. You wanna pulverize the garlic and get all of that oil and its essence extracted. Okay, when it's all nice and creamy, you can start adding your basil. And I only use a few leaves at a time. I wanna get them all nice and crushed up before I add others. Otherwise, you're just filling up your mortar and it you just get lost in it. It's really hard to make progress when you overfill. Ideally, you want to harvest your basil before it bolts. That means before you get these little flower buds on it. Um, it's not a total loss. You just lose a little bit of that freshness and it gets a little more um, astringent when it's bolted. And you also lose, you sacrifice some of those oils. It's not always ideal, and sometimes I go out there and I'm like, oh man, it's starting to go to flour, but I will use it anyway. Now, if you're just making pesto for two or even four or five people, you can do this while your pasta water is heating up and your pasta is cooking. It really just takes a few minutes. Yeah, it's, it's hands-on minutes. You have to be doing something the whole time, but the flavor and the texture, I think, are worth it. Phew, covered in garlic. Okay, so I have about a, a quarter cup of mashed leaves. That's maybe two cups, two cups of fresh leaves, fairly um, compacted. And that's about all that this mortar and pestle will hold. Otherwise, it just starts splattering and getting really messy. 
so we've got our pulverized goo to this I'm gonna add the pine nuts I'm gonna add like a third of a cup and same thing it's just continue to pulverize the mix and this is what it looks like it's just this really beautiful fine paste you shouldn't be able to see any identifiable pieces of leaves and the nuts will emulsify it and make it really nice and creamy when you get them all crushed up if you're adding parmesan to this and you're not going to cook the pesto like say you're going to serve it just as a side with some bread for dipping you can go ahead and add the parmesan cheese now because I add my cheese into my dish after I cook it, um, I'm going to make pasta tonight. So I'm going to omit the cheese for right now. Now this is the part where so many people go wrong is they don't understand the concept of pesto is flavored oil and they skimp on it. So their pesto is sticky and dry and it's too strong and it sticks to the roof of your mouth and it doesn't it just it's not good and it's because they don't put enough oil so same thing you don't want to like smash this and spray oil everywhere but you want to definitely incorporate all of that oil and smash those little bits and get it all stirred up so you want to go ahead and just continue your process once you add the oil and it should be very very loose okay so that took less time than my water took to boil now you're going to taste it we're looking for a balance of garlic and salt So tonight I'm going to make this with some spaghetti cooked al dente. Now, did you know that pasta, durum wheat pasta, not regular pasta, the good stuff made from the high protein durum wheat, is a low glycemic index food. However, there's a caveat. If you cook it like Americans cook it, so it's all soft and squishy, it actually will spike your glucose level. If you cook it al dente, meaning like to the tooth as the Italians cook it, just barely tender with a little bit of resistance. Then it becomes lower on the glycemic index. Have a wonderful day and thanks for being here thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the video hit the thumbs up leave a comment it really does help us creators and I just like to know that you guys are out there and what you're doing thank you for watching and I'll see you next time